Computerized Medical Equipment Management Systems or CMEMS will be our topic. This topic will be separated into three parts. The first the part will have a general introduction about computerized medical equipment management systems. Then we will talk about the commercial uh, computerized medical uh, equipment management systems available. Uh, then we will have a tech spot about the ingress protection for medical devices. Uh, and it's important uh, when we are talking about the disinfection methods for the medical devices. Uh, the second part will be a practical example about computerized medical equipment management system. This example will be about HEMS, which is developed by EQ2, uh, and it will be the topic for uh, this second part. Uh, also, in the second part, we'll talk about the planning for the acquisition of a computerized medical equipment management system and its implementation. And finally, we'll talk about the future of computerized medical equipment management system and uh, its relation to the big data and uh, artificial intelligence analysis. And I have uh, a proposal concerning this. So as we said, the, the topic of this uh, will be about uh, computerized medical equipment management system. So it's related to the management part and not uh, only dedicated for the maintenance uh, because we have a computerized medical equipment uh, maintenance system which will be only dedicated for the maintenance phase and not covering the whole phase so the topic will be for the med uh, computerized medical equipment management system also in the future i expect we will have a computerized medical equipment uh, system for the planning part and the management part. This is an example of a medical equipment maintenance management. Uh, it's called uh, Inument. Now we'll start with a, an introduction about computerized medical equipment management systems. Uh, to manage thousands of medical devices and systems in hospitals, a computer database customized for medical equipment management is needed. For example, in the case of the University of Vermont Medical Center or most medical centers, uh, in the case of the University of Vermont Medical Center, which has nearly around 20,000 medical devices in their medical equipment inventory, uh, which is also existed at three different campuses with many satellite locations. So, in such environment, a computerized medical equipment management system will be needed in order to manage uh, this great number of medical devices in the medical inventory. So, all devices classified as medical equipment requiring management must have documentations for activities related to these devices. Uh, such activities will include deployment and installation of uh, these devices, uh, acceptance testing for new devices, schedule and unscheduled maintenance uh, with uh, parts and labor expenditures, recalls, and finally other events needed to be documented such as uh, incident investigations and other activities and events. Such system is called a computerized medical equipment management system. Ames is a famous computerized medical equipment management system, which was developed by Phonics Data Systems and is currently acquired by the ECRI Institute. So what is the purpose for the computerized uh, medical equipment management system? Uh, the purpose is more than documentation for uh, regulatory stan uh, standards or legal purposes. The goals of such system is to proactively manage medical equipment, to reduce failures, downtime, uh, support costs, use errors, and also to improve patient care quality and safety as well as utilization. The features uh, for such system, uh, the data input into the system must be easily input, standardized and accurate in order to avoid what is known as a garbage in, garbage out. So the computerized medical equipment system should have 
or should be able firstly to collect data about the medical devices and then analyze and present the information in a variety of formats uh, for example web-based PDF native database such as SQL format printed reports exported to spreadsheets such as uh, Excel also uh, output through other means uh, for example text phone and pager means for emergent situations so this is a model for a garbage in garbage out in case that the data is not uh, the, the the entered data is not accurate and standardized this uh, into this uh, data also should be entered into a system which is uh, well designed then this will lead to unuseful data generated by such a uh, system so we should have a uh, data entry uh, which is accurate and standardized, uh, standardized as well as the computerized the medical equipment system should have certain features in order to have a useful information generated as reports now we'll talk about the commercial computerized medical equipment management systems uh, we have three types of such commercially available systems we have the offline system online system and uh, systems which have both capability of being online and offline simultaneously so what the uh, offline means uh, offline is uh, where the computerized medical equipment management system software is installed in a hardware or ha in hardware which is exactly uh, existed physically physically in a healthcare facilities such as a hospital or a medical center such hardware uh, will include server or servers network infrastructure and so on whereas the online system uh, the software is ac uh, accessed online through user accounts similar to any online account emails facebook linkedin and so on the only hand, uh, hardware needed to have access to such systems uh, are pc computers desktop or laptops pdas smartphones tablets and so on so as we can see in this slide uh, here are some uh, of the hardware which is needed for the online access of the uh, of such online systems uh, the pda the uh, computers which can be uh, either a laptop or uh, desktop uh, also tablets and smartphones uh, the, uh, the use of the smartphones for a real time access for the computerized medical equipment management system is important especially in the case when we have a medical center with a different locations or different campuses such as the case of the uh, university of Vermont medical center also we need uh, a barcode label printer uh, in uh, as a hardware uh, here are uh, some examples for commercially available computerized medical equipment management systems available in US and worldwide. Uh, for the first one will be the AIMS, which is uh, developed by Phonics Data Systems and is acquired currently by the ECRI Institute. We have the HEMS, which will be the topic of uh, the second part and is developed by EQ2. We have the TMS, which is developed by Four Rivers Software. We have the TMA, which is developed by TMA Systems. And finally, we have the Mainspring Health. Now we'll move to the take a spot of uh, this lecture, uh, which will be about the ingress protection for medical devices. And it's important to select the appropriate method for the disinfection of this medical device. Uh, this is currently very important uh, due to the spread of the coronavirus worldwide and the need to uh, disinfect uh, the wards where uh, receiving patients with the coronavirus or any uh, other site. As we can see, the first method to disinfection is the spraying of uh, 
disinfectant uh, into the surfaces. We can see a hygienist which is uh, spraying the, the disinfectant uh, into such environment to uh, kill the uh, viruses and germs. As we can see uh, here, uh, there are high, many hygienists which are using the spray method for the disinfection. Uh, such method will be uh, a danger, uh, dangerous in the case of medical devices, which has uh, a lower IP number, uh, which ingress protection number, and we will talk later what this IP number means if it has a low IP number. Uh, medical devices are a sensitive electronic devices which has electronic boards. Uh, which, uh, such electronic boards are made of electronic components. Uh, some of these electronic components generate heat and needs uh, thermal management uh, for, to remove this heat uh, for the proper working of these uh, electronic components and boards. Uh, this will be challengeable for the disinfection method in case we have uh, uh, medical devices uh, which need uh, to get rid of a lot of heat uh, generated by, this device, uh, by these devices. Uh, as we said, the first method is the spraying of this uh, disinfectant, and this will be very dangerous in case, for example, if we consider this laptop, which has a fan, and which, uh, in, in the case of the spray, spraying the disinfectant, this will enter into the electronic boards of this laptop, into the hard disk, into the motherboard, and will lead to the uh, failure of this laptop, or even complete damage. So. In this case, the better method is to spray the disinfectant onto a cloth and the, uh, disinfecting the surface of this laptop with this cloth. Similarly, the case of the medical devices, in case they have uh, a high thermal uh, or high energy generated by the electronic components of these medical devices, it's better to avoid the direct spraying of this uh, disinfectant or else a failure or a complete damage of this device will happen. Another, another method to disinfect uh, the surfaces or medical devices in a hospital is a use of ultraviolet uh, radiation. Uh, we can see here a robot which uh, is a uh, UVD robot which is developed by Blue Ocean Robotics which is used to disinfect the medical devices and the uh, different areas and surfaces in a hospital. Now we'll watch a short video about this and how this, uh, this uh, by the way, this uh, robot is autonomous which uh, has self-driving and has a lot of safety features. Now we'll watch this video. So as we said, this is an autonomous robot. So as we can see, it's a self-control. So what is an IP address, uh, IP rate or code? Uh, IP is an acronym for ingress protection. Uh, it, uh, as we can see, it will be made up of two numbers and two letters. We have what we call uh, IP rating guide. So what is IP rating? Each IP rating has two numbers and two letters. The two numbers, both of which give information about the protection level. A higher number means a greater protection against solids and liquids. 
The first number will be from 0 to 6, which refers to the level of protection against solid objects and moving parts such as dust, debris, and other solid matter. The second number will be from 0 to 8, references the level of liquid and moisture protection. Uh, recently, the second number, which will be the protection against liquid, will become from 0 to 9. So the IP code, uh, the IP codes range from IP00 into IP68 or recently IP69. This according to the uh, IEC 6025-9 standard, which is the International Electrotechnical Commission standard for the uh, ingress protection. Uh, also, another important when we are talking about the disinfection of the medical devices about the vapor spray or aerosol. Uh, so we are talking about the second number. So having a higher number, a second number, the higher the protection in the case of of, of disinfection using uh, aerosol or uh, vapor. So as we said, the IP number or code is made up of two numbers and two letters. I'm Connor with Jamie Supply. And in this video, we're gonna explain IP codes, or as it's also known, the Ingress Protection Rating System. The Ingress Protection System is a classification system that determines the degrees of protection an electrical enclosure has against solid objects and liquids. Essentially, when you hear the term waterproofing or water resistance, the IP rating will be the actual value to which the device is protected. As an example, we're gonna look at the new NXP500 digital two-way radio from Kenwood. It boasts an IP55, 56, and 67 protection rating. IP ratings are given to a wide variety of everyday electronics, like the cell phone in your pocket, flashlights, power tools, and obviously, two-way radios. They're also extremely important when it comes to electrical instruments that may be used in high voltage situations. In fact, there are typically standards that electrical instruments must meet to be used for certain types of work. However, as we're talking about Kenwood radios, simply put, the higher the IP value, the tougher the radio. So what do each of those numbers mean? Well, the first digit rates the amount of protection from solids. From larger objects like fingers and tools, all the way down to microscopic dust, this number is gonna tell you what kind of solids could potentially enter the enclosure. The first digit is rated on a scale of zero to six. Zero meaning no protection from any solid object, and six meaning complete protection from the smallest solids, like dust. The second digit defines an electrical instrument's resistance to liquids. This value is rated on a scale of zero to eight. Once again, zero means no protection from liquids entering the enclosure, and eight means the enclosure has total protection from liquids. For both digits, the values between define various tests and procedures done to evaluate the protection level. One criticism of the Ingress protection rating is that a device could potentially pass a high level of testing but that doesn't always mean it'll pass a lower level due to differences in testing procedures. So let's jump back to the NXP500 radio that we mentioned earlier and break down what those IP values are. To begin with, it's IP67, which is about as much protection as you can get. This means it's completely sealed off from dust and can withstand total immersion in water up to one meter for 30 minutes. This radio also meets IP55 and 56 ratings which differ from 67 by using high and low pressure water jets to test its protection. So when comparing devices, make sure you look for multiple levels of rating to know you're totally protected, like the NXP500. Now that you understand the IP code for electronic enclosures, you understand that the NXP500 is a seriously tough radio. So this is a general uh, video about the ingress protection. Uh, now. We can see the ingress protection rating guide. As we said, the recent uh, scale for the second digit becomes from 0 up to 9. So the scale for the solid will be from 0, from zero to uh, 6, and the scale, which will be uh, the protection against solids. The second number, which will be the protection against, uh, against liquid, uh, will be have a scale from 0 till 9. As we can see here, uh, automated external defibrillators, uh, commercial uh, ones, uh, we have different IP rating for each manufacturer and each model. Now we will watch uh, a brief video which shows the testing of, of a medical device which is a medical clinical assistant. Uh, we will have the testing against uh, well, a test what we call a water splash test uh, for the testing of the eye uh, ingress protection 
IPX4, which will be, as we said, will be very useful in, de in deciding the disinfection method. So we are studying the second number. So in this video, we will see how the testing uh, for the ingress protection will be done for such devices. What you are about to see is a water splash test. The product being tested is the Advantech MICA 101 Medical Clinical Assistant. The splash test equipment fulfills International Electrotechnical Commission IEC 60529 requirements. In this test, the MICA 101 is turned on before the test begins. The water jets shoot toward the center from a 180 degree semicircle with a mean flow rate per jet of 0.07 liters per minute. The semicircle oscillates through nearly 360 degrees, 180 degrees on either side of vertical, subjecting the MICA 101 to water spray from every side. After 10 minutes of water assault, the MICA 101 is still running like a champ. The MICA 101 passes IEC 60529 Edition 2.1 2001-02 Item IPX4, well exceeding the requirements of most normal clinical environments. Advantech MICA 101, the medical clinical assistant. So as we can see, is this device, uh, the medical uh, clinical assistant, uh, has been testing the, according to the IEC, the International Electrical Commission 6025-9, uh, IPX4, uh, which is the protection uh, for in the case of environment where uh, there is the penetration of uh, possibility of uh, entering of uh, liquids into the device. Uh, uh, if, as uh, a summary, uh, we should... Uh, uh, try to avoid or guide the staff who are uh, disinfecting uh, the medical devices and surfaces in uh, the and especially the medical devices in a hospital or a medical center to avoid a direct spraying of the aerosol or the disinfectant into uh, the medical device in order to avoid a possible failure or damage for this device due to the uh, failure of the electronic components and the electronic boards uh, of these of these medical devices. Uh, uh, and finally, it's also important uh, to consider the second number in the IP code when you are uh, determining uh, the uh, where this device will be used in what environment. For example, uh, if you, it will be used in environment where is uh, where there uh, there is a regularity disinfection of the medical devices such that uh, such as the operating rooms or in a department uh, receiving a patient with infectious diseases such as the coronavirus finally